Good day, yogis. Brooke Blankenship here with a chair yoga class for you. If you will take a seat in your chair, push your back all the way up against the back of the seat, and take a moment to come into your space. Maybe shutting down the eyes, taking notice of your breath. We're always breathing. It is our life force. But do we notice our breath all that much? Do we ever give it any mind? Outside of yoga class, that is. Feel the chest rise and gently fall. Feel the belly and the abdomen expand and contract. Feel that the breath radiates that life force that flows through your body. Our breath can give us energy. Our breath can heal us. Gently opening the eyes back up and then bringing the hands out in front of us. We're going to raise our arms up to the ceiling, stretching our arms up to the sky, maybe even giving our backs a little bend, bending our backs a little bit, our upper backs and looking up towards the sky and then coming back up to neutral grabbing your right wrist with your left hand and then gently giving it a tug as you open that armpit up towards the sky. Unclenching your jaw. Coming back up, stretching the arms up high. And then the other side, grabbing the left wrist with the right hand, opening up that shoulder and the armpit up to the sky. And then coming back up, releasing and letting the arms come back down. Shaking them out. Great job. We're going to start moving our arms around in circles. So big, slow circles all the way around. And our circles are going to get a little bit smaller. And a little bit smaller, just tiny little circles now we're making with our fingertips. 
breathing into the strength you need to keep those arms lifted up, dropping them back down, shaking them out. Great job. We're gonna do that again, this time going the opposite direction. So starting with our small circles, going forward this time. Medium sized circles. Staying strong, you got this. And big circles. One more big circle all the way around. And resting the hands down on top of the knees, shaking out the shoulders. Great job. So scooting forward in your seat, we're gonna wake up that spine with some cat cow. So grabbing hold of the kneecaps, I'm gonna sit up really nice and tall to start with. Nice, tall, elongated spine and neck. And then we're gonna take a big breath in as we pull the belly and the heart forward, maybe taking the gaze up towards the ceiling. Exhaling as we round the back, pulling the belly button to the spine, chin comes down to the chest. Inhaling. And exhale. Big breath in and out. In and out. Coming back to neutral, taking your left hand to your outside of your right knee, grabbing hold of the back of the chair getting really tall and long in the spine, and then turning and looking over that shoulder. Imagine yourself twisting a little bit deeper with each twist, with each breath. untwisting, unwinding, coming back through the center and to the other side. Grabbing hold of that chair with your left hand. Right hand comes to the outside of the knee. Big breath in, get really tall and long in the spine. And then twisting and looking towards the side of the room. Turning back around. Excellent, excellent. So we're going to lift, start working on our hips now. So lifting that left knee up towards the sky, towards the chest, pulling it in as close as you can and breathing into the stretch. Excellent job, lowering it back down, lifting the opposite knee up. And 
lowering back down. Great job. So before we stand up, I want to stretch our toes. So this can be really, really, really uh, intense stretch, but stretch the toes and the front of your um, foot by taking those toes, curling them under, and just putting a little bit of pressure, okay? A little bit of pressure on those toes. So stretching all through the front, of the leg here, especially in those toes and the foot. Sending your breath down there. Trying to take some of the intensity out of the pose. And then Stopping that, rolling the foot out. Woo, excellent job. Other side, so take those right toes, turn them under, and then apply a little bit of pressure. One side may definitely provide more sensation than the other, for sure. Excellent job releasing that foot rolling it out and then dropping the foot back down. So we're going to bring that uh, knee back into the chest. So starting with your left knee, bringing that knee back into the chest, squeezing it in tight. And then we're going to let it come over to the side. Coming back in and over to the side back in and to the side back in and to the side dropping the left foot down hugging the right knee into the chest and we're going to start moving here we go out and in out and in out and in, out and in. Last time, out and in, dropping it back down. Ooh, my hips are feeling tight today. I don't know about yours. It's going to feel good to stretch them out. All right, so I always like to throw in a seated pigeon at the very beginning of class because it feels so good when we do it for the second time at the end of class, to me anyway. I hope it does for you guys too. So starting with our left foot over our right knee, I want you to sit up nice and straight and tall, okay? And if you feel inclined, you can move the chest forward over the folded knee to increase the sensation. Coming back up. Excellent, dropping that foot back down, rubbing out that hip, and then moving to the other side. So we have bringing in our right ankle over our left knee, staying here if you're already feeling the sensation, 
and trying to sit up with a nice straight back. Even when we sit up with a nice straight back, I feel like that also increases the uh, sensation in that hip, okay? So if you need more, bending over, being easy with yourself. This is the beginning of our class. Remember, we will practice this pose again at the end of class, and hopefully it will feel much better than the first time around. Keeping those hips healthy is so important. Coming back up, dropping that knee down. Great job. Coming to standing and moving to the back of your chair. So we're gonna start with some squats, waking up those legs and the quadriceps. Those are those giant muscles in the front here. Um, and also strengthening for us. So I want you to bring your feet out wide, okay? And then we're gonna come into a yogi squat, okay? So grabbing hold of the chair as much as you need it for support, and then bending the knees, coming into a yogi squat, yes. So here we are. I want you to make sure that your knees and your ankles are in one line. So if you need to heel toe your feet apart a little bit or together a little bit to make that happen, please do so, okay? So it's really important that your knees and your, your knees are not going out over your heels, okay? So pressing into the chair, we're holding our yogi squat. I know, your legs are on fire right now. Mine too. All right, yogis, ready? Straighten up. Whoo! That was a good one. All right, we're gonna go for it again. Are you ready? Lowering down, bending the knees, holding your chair, using it for support as much as you need to. Breathing into it. And coming back up. Whoo! Are your legs talking to you yet? Mine are. Oh yeah. All right, yogis. One last time, and I'm gonna add in an extra challenge for those of you that would like to challenge yourself a little bit more today. All right, so we're gonna bend those knees, we're gonna calm down, and if you are already in this squat and you would like to add a challenge, I want you to lift your left heel. Drop it back down. Lift your right heel. Drop it back down. Left, drop. Right, drop, left, drop, right, drop. Oh my gosh, can we do one more? Left, drop, right, drop. Oh, straighten it out, shake it out. Whoo, send those hips side to side like Elvis. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna take a fold over our chair, okay? So bringing your hands down, either the um, size of the chair or even to the base of the chair, and then allowing the upper body to be heavy here. So dropping the head, maybe bending the elbows. The legs are straight. We're getting a stretch through the back of both legs. If your head is hanging, you're also getting a nice stretch in the back of the neck. And then very slowly, yogis, very slowly, I want your head to be the very last thing to come up. Use your chair for support and roll your spine up, vertebrae by vertebrae, very slowly, using your chair to help you up. 
and the head is the last thing to rise. Very good. All right. So giving ourselves a second, we just spent a few moments upside down, practically. We'll call that an inversion, even though we did use the chair. It's still an inversion where we're going upside down. So let's give ourselves just a moment to readjust and then heel toe those feet back together. Excellent job. So we're going to come into a warrior one position today using our chair. So your left, right foot is going to stay towards the back and I want you to angle it in slightly, okay, towards the chair. Your left foot is going to come in front of you and I'm going to inch mine up. I'm going to keep inching it up because I want the same thing to happen as I did before. My knee and my heel need to be in alignment. I don't want my knee to go past my heel. So I'm bending into that knee. I'm feeling this really, really yummy stretch through my right hip and also through the back of my right leg, okay? So this leg is supporting me just as much as the back leg is. Okay, the torso is centered and my body is turned towards facing my toes, okay? If you'd like, you can extend your arm up towards the sky. This is warrior one. Straightening that front leg, bringing the hand to the hip. Okay, so we're gonna come right now into a triangle pose, okay? So triangle, this hand is gonna slide down the leg and maybe I'd walk my other hand down once I'm comfortable to the seat of the chair. But I have my hand on my leg, maybe I've moved down to my shin. Excellent job. So I'm feeling that stretch through the right hip, even in the left a little bit, I can feel it in the top of my hip joints. Top of my pelvis, really. And then coming back up, excellent job turning all 10 toes towards the chair. We're gonna come into that forward fold one more time using the chair. So coming forward, maybe allowing the head to be heavy. And then again, I'm gonna roll up vertebrae by vertebrae, letting my head be the last thing to rise up. Excellent job, yogis, excellent job. All right, so we're gonna heel to those feet back together and move to the other side of the chair. So now I'm setting up my left foot so that it is angled in towards the chair, okay, at a diagonal, okay? So it's angled in towards the chair at a diagonal just behind the chair. I'm gonna use my hand on the chair for support and then I'm gonna take my right toes and I'm gonna allow them to start inching forward, okay? Coming into our warrior one. So once I've got enough, um, width in between my legs, then I can bend that knee and get that really yummy stretch right here in my hip, okay? If you're feeling comfortable, you can test your balance by raising your arm up, looking straight ahead,
Great job, straightening that leg. We're gonna come into our triangle pose. So maybe moving the hand down to the bottom of the chair, allowing that hand to come down, body turning a little bit to the side. And then coming back up, turning both feet towards the chair. This time, we're gonna bring our hands down to the chair. You're gonna place your left hand down on the chair underneath of your face. Your right hand is gonna come up to the ceiling. Twisting, looking up. Coming back down, replacing your right hand or your left hand with your right hand, okay? And then reaching up. Lowering back down. And then using the chair, bending the knees slightly, using the chair to help you back up to standing. Coming back to feet together. And we're gonna come into our Warrior Two series. So, bringing the toes to the left side of the chair, we're gonna take our left foot and ground it into the ground, feeling that that leg turn on, okay? Feeling your quadricep and your calves fire up, okay? Spreading the toes on the ground as much as you can. Feeling that leg fire up. Taking your right leg behind you and maybe a little bit forward, okay? So I've got my right leg behind me. I've got my left leg in front of me and I've got my arms out over my legs, okay? I've got this long line of energy that I can feel flowing in between my middle fingers through my arms and my torso. Can you feel that? Yeah, that's the fire. That's right there. That's your energy. That's the energy that you are creating in this powerful pose. And Warrior Two is a powerful pose, as so says the name. That energy is also helping you strengthen. All right, yogis, we're gonna flip that palm and reverse our warrior, allowing your right hand to come down to your leg and the left hand comes up and over, taking a look up at those fingertips. If that's too much, just keeping your gaze going forward. Allowing your breath to circulate through the ribs. And then coming back, we're gonna come into a side ankle. So elbow comes down to the ground, arm comes up and then we're going to bring that elbow to the ear opening up the armpit towards the sky maybe taking the gaze up towards the sky as well feeling that energy pulsating through the right side of the body from the toes all the way through the fingertips. All right, yogis, and then coming back up, we're gonna bring our hands behind us, 
interlace them and then open up that chest towards the sky. Releasing the arms, shaking it out, and then we're going to switch to our other side. Coming through the center, just for a moment, we're going to take a moment to reset in our supported yogi squat here. Okay, so basically the same thing that we did before. Now we just have the support, full support of the chair underneath us. This one's a lot easier, huh? Great job. So bringing your left hand to the outside of your right knee. I want you to reach back and grab your chair and twist. Untwist, come back through center, other side, twist. Untwist, come back to center, great job and then moving over into our other side. So I'm gonna take that right foot and I'm gonna ground it down into the floor, okay? Spreading my toes, lift your toes up and then spread them out like webs, okay? So um, spread your toes out. Try to take up as much room with your foot, as much surface area as you can, okay? Then our other foot, our right foot is gonna come out behind us, left foot, excuse me, is gonna come out behind us, okay? turning the toes in a little bit, and I'm gonna be pressing into the surface of that foot as well, okay? Trying to keep this leg as straight as we can. My arms are gonna come out on either side. Feeling strong in our warrior, feeling that energy flowing through the fingertips on the left side to the fingertips on the right side, all the way through. We're going to reverse our warrior. So flipping that front palm over, bringing the back hand to rest on the leg, and then reaching that arm up and over. Coming back down, we're gonna use that elbow to rest on our knee now as the arm comes up to the sky. And then drawing that elbow towards the ear, creating that long line of energy all the way through the left side of the body this time. Maybe turning the chest up towards the ceiling. And then coming back up, we're gonna bring those hands together behind our back now, interlacing the fingers, and then trying to straighten out the arms and open up the chest towards the sky. Unclenching the jaw.
releasing. Coming back to the center. We're gonna bend both knees and bring the legs out wide. This time, I want you to bring your feet a little bit in front of you. We're gonna bend our shoulders down towards the floor. So grabbing a hold of your kneecaps, we're gonna bend the shoulder down towards the floor. Ah, stretching through that shoulder and coming back up. Bending and back up. If you've got a spot in your shoulders that is extra sore and this feels good to you, feel free to stop and linger, okay? I have really tight shoulders, carry all my stress right in my neck and shoulders. So this feels amazing to me. I hope it feels amazing for you too. One more on each side. All right, and then coming back up, we're going to move into a seated eagle now. So seated eagle pose, we're gonna cross um, the uh, left and right legs and we're gonna, and we're gonna wrap the arms as well, okay? So I'm gonna give you a couple different options here. So <clears throat> taking the left leg over the right, staying here, or seeing if you can wrap, double wrap your legs, okay? So that's always an option, okay? And then bringing your um, left hand underneath of your right. So we're gonna cross those elbows. There's several options here, okay? So my right elbow can go underneath of my left elbow and I can grab my shoulders. This is option one, okay? Option two, I can bring the backs of my hands together. Option three, I can double wrap my arms and try to bring my palms or my fingers to my palms, okay? So you choose the option that is best for you in your body. Remember, this is your yoga practice. If something doesn't feel good or something feels really good, you have total freedom to linger, to back off, to do something else, okay? This is for you, okay? So we've got our eagle arms and our eagle legs, and now I want you to lift those elbows wherever you are, lift them up towards the ceiling. So we're creating a little back bend here, and then I want you to bring those elbows down to touch the knees. Great job. So we're crunching in the stomach. Lifting up. Crunching down, rounding the back. Up. Crunching down. Up. Crunching down. Release, and other side, okay? Dance the shoulders out, woo! So eagle is a very detoxing pose. You should always drink water after a yoga class, but especially when we've been doing detoxing poses like twists, and eagle is the mother of all twists. So let's cross the leg over, right leg over the left this time. Okay, so we can cross it, we can double wrap it if you'd like to try that. And then your left, your right arm is gonna come under your left arm. So starting here, I'm gonna move my right arm under my left arm and I'm gonna grab opposite shoulders. I'm gonna bring the backs of the hands together or I'm gonna bring the palms together. Okay, try to bring the palms together. So yogi's choice, where you go with it. Once we get there, we're gonna lift those elbows up towards the ceiling, creating a little bit of a back bend. And then lowering down to the knees. Touch the elbows to the knees. Excellent job, yogis. Lifting up. 
lowering down, up, lowering down, up, lowering down. Excellent job. Unwind the arms, keep the legs crossed. We're going to come right back into that uh, recline or to that uh, seated pigeon. So um, knee again and heel are in line. Again, we've got the left leg, or the right leg over the right. And then from here, yogi's choice. If you'd like to lean forward and feel a little bit more sensation, you're welcome to. If not, staying right where you are and sitting up nice and tall, as straight as you can and breathing into that right hip. Coming back up, uncrossing and recrossing on the other side. Staying here, sitting up nice and tall. We're bending over, creating a little bit more sensation in that left hip. Coming back up, uncrossing, finding any last movements that you need to before setting yourself up for our final resting pose, Savasana. Feet come flat onto the floor. Hands can lay down in your lap, rest down in your lap, or hang down by your sides. Palms can be facing up to feel some energy, Get some good vibes coming in. Palms can be facing down to ground yourself. Maybe you're feeling a little anxious today. So releasing some of that energy, grounding yourself down with the earth, reconnecting. Taking a moment to close the eyes. Focus only on the breath. Give gratitude to yourself for making this time on your mat today, in your chair. Giving gratitude to your body for carrying you through this life. Open up to new energy. As you change, what works for you may change too. The purpose of the journey is to open up, but it comes, but with it comes the responsibility of watching how we feel, how our bodies feel in certain circumstances. With it comes the responsibility of knowing that certain things 
used to be to work for us, certain things we used to be able to handle may not work as well any longer. As we change, we will want and need the energy around us to change too. We'll want to feel better, energize us, be good for us. At first, we may say, this never bothered me before. I don't know why I'm so sensitive now. Then we may wait for our bodies and lives to return to normal, to return to how they used to be. You are becoming more sensitive, more open than you've ever been. When you were closed, you didn't feel as much, didn't respond as much. Sometimes you weren't aware of what you were feeling or how your body reacted. Now that you're more open, your body, mind, spirit, and soul will be far more affected by what you take in, whether it's food, drink, or the energy of a person or situation. You will feel more intensely. You will want different foods, different people, different places, different clothing, different activities. As your energy changes, you will likely want different energy around you. Listen to your body and emotions when they tell you something no longer works for you. Let the old fall away. Listen to your inner guidance as your heart leads you to someplace new. Beginning to wiggle the fingers and the toes, slowly bringing movement back into the body. Gently opening the eyes back up. The light in me loves and honors the light in each and every one of you. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed today's class. Namaste.